I'm just gonna level with you. I really fucking hate today's movie. A lot. Not because the movie itself sucks, although it does! But because it's a remake of one of the greatest ghost stories of all time, The Haunt. Directed by the world-renowned Robert Wise, this psychological and paranormal horror film played off the fact that you didn't know how much of the ghost story was real ghosts, and how much was in the head of our mentally tortured protagonist. You know films like Paranormal Activity, The Others, or even The Blair Witch Project, where the fear comes from what you don't see rather than what you do? This is the film that perfected that. And even if you don't find it scary, it's a brilliant character study and a gothic story. It was a brilliant film back then, and it's a brilliant film right now. So director Jan Devant, you know, this fucker, came up one day and said, What does that Robert Weishmuck know? He hasn't directed anything good! I mean, what does he have under his belt? Just the day the earth stood still, sound of music, West Side Story, the Andromeda Strain, Sand Pebbles? What a hack! I directed this shit! So I can do it so much better! I know what's scary! I made a tornado growl! I'm the master of fucking subtlety! So, as you can imagine, this was gonna be an old versus new of the two haunting movies. <laughs> pointless. There's no contest. The old wins. But I'd still like to go over the comparisons just so I can fucking stick it to this film. So I guess this is an old-ish versus new-ish. I don't want to waste any time. I want to dive right into this pickle cock. Let's take a look at The Haunting. So the film starts out with a woman named Eleanor, played by Lily Taylor. To be fair, not a bad replacement for Julie Harris. She's being thrown out of her mother's apartment right after her mother passed away. As you can imagine, she's not too thrilled. Do you understand that I have nowhere to go? Lou and I are very busy, and we could use someone to help us with the cleaning and the cooking. Looking after Richie. Eleanor, help me. I gotta pee. <laughs> nice read there, kid. You could open Hamlet with that. To pee or not to pee. <laughs> so, seeing how she has no place to go, she comes across a want ad for a sleep study needing insomniacs. The experiment is run by Dr. Moreau. In the original, he was played by Richard Johnson. Here, he's played by Liam Neeson. Oh god, the sound of his monotone voice would put any insomniac to sleep. But as chairman of this department, I can... Madam, I know you clinical guys don't like to ask these questions, but think about it. What is fear, anyway? It's a series of automatic responses to a given stimulus. The only problem with fear is that it has largely become inappropriate. Do sweaty palms help to talk to your boss? And yet we carry with us these primordial fear responses that do the opposite of what they were intended to do. Why is that? David, David, no one is saying that these aren't provocative questions. What were the provocative questions? You're bringing your insomniacs to this house under false pretenses. Because the experiment needs a credible cover story. Calling it an insomnia study allows me to create a highly suggestive environment to investigate the dynamics of fear. You don't tell the rats they're actually in a maze, Malcolm. Come on. Oh, I guess that's it for winning him over. He must have really been sucked in by that stunning come on argument. I hear Professor Vaughn's got a lot of research done with his classic A debate. So everybody's off to the haunted house to partake in the sleep experiment. And this brings me to my first downgrade in the comparison. In this film, the doctor is tricking the subjects to come to the haunted house for some half-assed, not really explained very well experiment. In the original, he just tells them the truth! They're there to study ghosts! That's much more interesting! Why fool them into thinking there's something else? It's just a time waster! Are we supposed to be surprised like they are that the place is haunted? Everyone in the audience knows they're going to a haunted house. Fuck, it's called The Haunting! Did you really think you were gonna fool us? Next you'll be telling me that Peter Rabbit is about a fucking turtle! What do you want? So she meets Mr. Dudley, the caretaker. I'm Mr. Dudley, the caretaker. And eventually comes across his wife, Mrs. Dudley, inside. Oh my, I'm here with the... Dr. Marrow's group. You're the first. Boy, those Dudleys really like to introduce themselves in the most threatening way possible. Jumping out at gates, swinging doors open while holding knives. How much you want that there's some greets people with a hockey mask and chainsaw? We live in town. Nine miles. So there won't be anyone around if you need help. But Mrs. Dudley isn't quite as creepy or awkward as the original. They do manage to handle her scenes okay. But then we get the entrance of our next guest. A woman named Theo. Played by... Don't you love it here? Oh, snap. Oh, this is so twisted. Catherine, Zeta Jones. Zeta 
as Foster Kane meets the monster. Oh, yeah, I guess I should compare and contrast. <clears throat> uh, the original woman who played Theo did really good. She was fine. Oh, that body. Oh, Zeta, Zeta, Zeta. Oh, legs, legs, legs. Oh, Jones, Jones, Jones. I don't care if the last movie you did starred that schmuck from Geely. One day it will be mine. Seriously, they're piling on the sexy big time with this character. I mean, going all out. Is there anything else they could do to possibly make her more attractive? Okay, so despite how hot that is, this does lead to another downgrade. Theo in the original film is hinted that she might might be a lesbian or bisexual. And the reason it's best they don't come out and just say it is because it adds to the tension between her and Eleanor. See, half of the movie, they're the only ones in a room together. And when the only person you can cuddle up with may or may not have the hots for you, it makes the scene a little bit more uncertain and therefore uncomfortable. There was also a possible subplot with Eleanor having a crush on the Doctor and Theo having a crush on Eleanor. But again, it wasn't over the top, it was played pretty subtle. Subtlety in this film? <laughs> Fuck. I'm surprised they didn't just change her name to Liz B, and that's how friggin' obvious it is. Especially because, um, how do I say this? Uh, the 90s didn't always write gay people very well. Not that the characters written weren't proud to be gay. No, no, far from it. It's that they announced it everywhere they went and to every person they meet. I'm gay! <laughs> Thanks for asking. Kiss it, kiss it, spank it. So, as you can imagine, Zeta Jones in this movie is beyond blatant. But my boyfriend thinks so, my girlfriend doesn't. It's hard when you're the only one at the party. So, what about you? Boyfriends? Girlfriends? I could paint your portrait directly on you. Oh, just a little hair. Maybe it was overcompensating for past prejudices, maybe the writers didn't know how to write for gay people back then. Or, most likely in Zeta Jones's case, it's... <laughs> oh, we also have Owen Wilson as Luke, playing the original by Russ Tamlin. This is right at the point when the world couldn't tell if they found him funny or annoying yet. Wow, you're so dominant. Thanks. Theo. Hey, Theo. Awkwardly undressing you with my imagination. Done. So Liam Neeson and two extras finally enter the house to get the experiment rolling. The rest of you may hate your insomnia, but I'm not sure I want a cure for mine. My mind's racing with creative ideas and come 3 a.m. Oh, I will. I deserve that. I feel like a genius. But Neeson tells them that this creepy, demonic-looking house of death might actually have a scary backstory to it. His name is Hugh Crane. Crane made a fortune on the backs of workers in his textile mills. Now, this man could have anything he wanted. But what he wanted, more than anything, was a house filled with the laughter of children. Oh, yeah, because I'm sure a guy who looks like this was a real big softy with children. Come on, kids, we're going to Ebenezer Ahab's house! Yay! But that's where the fairy tale ends. Hugh and Renee would have no children. They all died at birth. And a few years later, Renee, she passed away, and Crane became a total recluse. But he kept on building, adding room upon room. It's as if he was building a home for the family he would never have. The townspeople said that sometimes at night they could hear sounds coming from the old house. The sounds of children. Well, good night. Let me know how the insomnia goes. Christ, I need a drink. I think there's more to that story. Do tell, assistant, who only had two lines before this scene. I can feel it. It's all around us. It's in the ceiling. It's in the walls. It's in this. Teach you to try have a part in this movie, and just for that, you and the other guy who never said anything are being banished forever, never to return to the script again. Ah, <laughs> oh, seriously though, a moment of silence for those totally pointless characters. Anyway, everyone tries to go to sleep, thus beginning the experiment. Eleanor, Jones, Wilson, the Doctor. Wait a minute, why is he going to sleep? He's supposed to be conducting the experiment, isn't he? 
Whether it's the insomnia study or the fear study, isn't he supposed to be around to witness it? Document it? You know, doctor stuff! I like the way you comb your hair like that. Did I mention that I was a lesbian? I'd be tossing and turning. But many of them can't sleep and find themselves roaming H.R. Geiger's Wonderland. Oh, God! God! Oh, the... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, you gotta be careful. Are you alright? I'm sorry. Oh, no, 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 you just don't jump out. Are you alright? Uh, yeah, no, no, no. Hey, calm down, guy. You just bumped into someone. You didn't perform an exorcism. No, no, I just, I couldn't sleep. I was just insomnia. Yeah, you gotta be careful, because I... I wasn't. I was just, uh... No, I know. I'm shy. I just... Oh. Good God. Get over it, man. Would you run a marathon before you came to the set? <gasps> now! What is it, then? Where's it coming from? It's here. So Eleanor and Jones are woken up by a loud pounding in the night. And though it's not as good as the scene from the original, it does manage to follow the formula okay, I guess. Oh, really? Hold on. <laughs> Zool, motherfucker, Zool! Okay, I'm going back to bed. Just leave the check under my door. What did you hear? Theo, all I heard was you screaming, Luke, help me, please. I wasn't screaming for you. Maybe I didn't make it clear that I was a lesbian. I don't, I don't see anything, I don't hear anything. Wow, I swear to God, screwed on the old bedroom selection. Every room's like four times as big as mine. Well, that was my button at the end of a scene to lighten up the tension. What'd you think? Not, not very good, was it? I'm Owen Wilson. Is that it? Is that what you heard? Well, I did just take a bath. I mean, it could have been. Now, that's not a bad idea, indicating that the sound they heard maybe wasn't supernatural, but could be explained by everyday occurrences. That's actually pretty clever. Let's blame it on the old plumbing then, huh? What else could it be? All except for one tiny problem. We saw the piano wire undo itself and attack a person! So why would we believe there's nothing supernatural there when you clearly showed us there was something supernatural there? But hey, don't worry. Even if that was the case, the very next scene shows clear as day that ghosts are real. So, yeah, that previous scene was completely useless. Seriously, though, a moment of silence for that completely pointless scene. Boy, the cotton textures on those sheets are looking a little fake CGI-ish, aren't they? Well, that's just what we call pillow talk, baby. And, for whatever reason, Eleanor has decided to not be scared by this. The knocking on the door? That was scary as shit. But a child's face with no eyes appearing on your pillow? Well, that's just enchanting. I'm sure you guys would have the exact same reaction. <sighs> oh, that was adorable. These carvings are really creepy. Thank you, Owen Wilson. I'm so glad somebody's here to tell us what's supposed to be scary in this movie. Lord knows I never would figure it out by just watching it. See how my old pal Theo's doing. I'm doing or wearing. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Did you see what she had on yesterday? Wow. Yeah, I definitely got a soft spot for Theo. But it won't stay soft for long. <laughs> I deserve that too.